Hello, in this presentation I show how to adjust the call price for dividends. There are two ways to do so. One is to use the modified Black-Scholes model and the other is to use the Merton model. And so what we're trying to say here is that if the ex-dividend dates on a stock occurs within the life of an option, then we can expect a couple of things to happen on the stock as well as on the option. One is that on the X dividend date, the stock price typically would fall by the amount of the dividend, all things equal. Secondly, we can expect the call price to also fall because as you know, stock price is the key variable driving the value of a call. And so, in this example, again we revisit with our add the money option, S is 75 and E is 75. Now though, this, the underly underlying stock will pay a dividend of 50 cents per share. This is a quarterly dividend. Now we assume here that the X dividend date is 80 days from today. So annually speaking, that's the result right there. Okay, so with everything in place, using the modified Black-Scholes model, what we do is to adjust the stock price by the amount of dividend. So let's call the adjusted stock price S, which is going to be the stock price minus the present value of the dividend. Here is the present value of the dividend using continuous discounting and this becomes the adjusted stock price of $74.5 approximately. So we're going to use this in the Black-Scholes model beginning with D1 and you see it up there right? and then also if you go to the final calculation of the call price you'd be using that S star, the adjusted dividend sorry, the adjusted stock price. So the adjusted stock price in this example, 74.51 would be used in the call option pricing model as well. This ND1 whose value comes out to be 0.5522 relies in part on the use of the adjusted stock price within the D1 construct. So that's really it. You know, with that you recalculate the call price and as you can see here it comes out to be about four dollars and seventy three cents which if you recall without dividends we calculated this to be five dollars. So call price is less as you can see when the option is written on a dividend paying stock. Now though using the Merton model what we actually do is to calculate the dividend yield defined here. And since this is a quarterly dividend, we annualize it by multiplying by 4. So this is the quarterly dividend yield right here, about 0.67% multiplied by 4 to annualize it, and we get to 0.67%. So now, within the call option pricing model right here, Right, we would um, d we define it in the way that you have that you see it here. So it's going to be the uh, present value, the continuous uh, discounting uh, factor right here, you know, the present value interest factor based on continuous discounting multiplied by S times ND1 and minus the present value of the exercise price multiplied by N of ND2. Now though, keep in mind in calculating D1 star, which we, you know, we now are going to have to throw in the dividend yield right here. So actually the adjustment in here is R, which is the continuous um, interest rate, minus D, which is the dividend yield. So as you can see, the dividend yield reduces the rate of return associated with um, this option. The rate of return is based on the risk-free rate, which describes the interest rate that you would earn if you were to keep your money for the purchase of the stock away for the period of the option, so to speak.
all right so this is where the adjustment takes place and so with that you calculate um, ND1 which we now call ND1 star keep in mind that this D1 star would be part of your D2 star which is what you see right here so with the calculations in place and remembering how you how you determine your cumulative probability value right you recalculate the price of the call option which comes out to be just about the same as what you would get if you used as I show here earlier the uh, black shows uh, model which relies on as you see back over here the adjusted stock price Esther so in the modified black shows model we calculate it to be four dollars and seventy three cents continuing in the Merton model we calculate it to be approximately the same thing here it's four point seventy five and that's really it in conclusion we remind ourselves that the value of a call is a positive function of the stock price the higher the price of the stock the higher the value of the call secondly it is a negative function of the exercise price the higher the exercise price the lower the value of the call thirdly it is a positive function of expiration time the longer the expiration time the higher the value of, of the call fourthly it is in fact a positive function of the rate of interest of the risk-free interest rate the higher the rate of interest the higher the value of a call I kind of said something in passing a little bit ago indicating that the reason is because buying a call is a way to defer your purchase of the stock if a stock is worth fifty dollars they are the uh, call option written on it may actually sell for let's say a dollar so you would pay only a dollar and save forty nine dollars waiting to uh, take delivery of the stock at some point in the future so the amount that you save right now which here is 49 can be placed in an interest bearing account earning R so the higher R is the more would be the future value of the unspent $49 and finally volatility call price is a positive function of volatility in that the greater the volatility of the underlying stocks price the greater would be the price of the call and this concludes this segment of the presentation my name is Pat Obi, professor of finance at Purdue University Calumet